Last time, we started to look at the relationship between market noise and market volatility. This time, we do the same, but in a more quantifiable way, which I hope you agree reveals some real insights into the way that price action behaves. And with this, we can better plan for how to exploit that price action to our advantage in our trading strategies. DarwinX is a UK FCA regulated broker and asset manager on a mission to disrupt the financial trading, investing and asset management industries. If you're a talented trader looking to attract investor capital to your strategies, DarwinX is the fastest way for you to do this. We enable traders to raise third party investor capital and then charge success fees on high watermark profits. Additionally, DarwinX itself invests in its traders with our seed capital allocation program that allocates up to 90 million euros per year in successful trading strategies. So if all of that sounds interesting, learn more by clicking on the link here or you can find further links in the description right below. Now back to today's tutorial. I'm hoping that the contents of today's episode is as much of an eye-opener to you as it was to me the first time I did this piece of analysis. Let's take a look at the relationship between market noise and market volatility. In the previous episode, we looked at how the relationship between volatility and noise changes in relation to conceptual price action. And we started to consider some of the implications for the assessment of these characteristics in trading. This time, the analysis that I look at provides proof for this behavior with a simple quantitative analytical study. So I'm going to look at a variety of different assets. One of them is a stock index, a currency pair, and also gold. Let's start off with the S&P 500. Now, along the bottom here on the x-axis, I have a measure of noise. And for this, I'm using price density and 20 periods. And then on the left-hand side, the y-axis is a measure of the relative ATR or average true range, which of course is a measure of volatility. And for this, I'm using the same period, 20. And each point that you see in the scatter chart was sampled once per hour over a period of about three and a half months. And so we get a really good illustration here of how the relationship between noise and volatility changed over that period of time. Take a look at the chart. If you need to, pause the video because there's an important pattern here. And if you look closely, you can actually see lines in the data. So there's one here, there's another here, here, and here. And in actual fact, there are many more. And this tells us a really important thing about how volatility and noise change over time. Now, interestingly, if we extend each of these lines, they all meet at the origin. So let's have a think about what this is actually telling us. These straight lines were formed because the noise and the volatility were exhibiting correlated behavior at that time. So if volatility increased, so did noise. And then if it increased more, noise increased more too. And that is what gives us these linear relationships within the data. And you can think of these as the short term correlated behaviors that we saw last time. However, then at some point, the whole regime shifts and the ratio between the volatility and the noise also shifts and possibly becomes uncorrelated for a period of time. Now, interestingly, if we draw a line of best fit through these data points, this is what we get. We can see that there's actually overall a negative correlation. So despite the fact that we have these periods of time where the price action exhibits correlation between noise and volatility, in the longer term, that is not the case. And if you watch the previous episode, you'll now start to understand how this data 
directly backs up what I was saying previously. Let's now turn our attention to euro dollar and take a look at the data. We see exactly the same behavior. We've got these very dominant lines in the data that show that correlated behavior. And once again, if you extend them, it goes directly to the origin. But just like with the S&P 500, the overall correlation here between the data is negative. Now, we see something interesting when we look at this chart for gold. Here, if we look outside the main cluster, we see that there's actually quite a few outliers in the data. With all of the data that's in these clusters, it's very difficult to work out how the data is really behaving. But with the outliers, this gives us a clue. Now, overall, just like we saw before, we have a negative correlation, so no difference there. But let's now start to take a look at the outliers. Just like in the previous two assets, we see three very distinct lines that again would join up at the origin. Now, each of these lines contains about eight to 10 different data points. So what that means is that for a period of eight to 10 hours, the volatility and the noise was exhibiting correlated behavior. But let's turn our attention now to these other points. Here, these don't lie on any line at all. They appear much more random in nature. So what does this tell us? Well, here, there is no correlation. And so I think that these points are indicative of those times when noise and volatility are uncorrelated. They are both moving independently. Now, obviously, it's a lot harder to distinguish this from the main cluster of points, but I think this tells us what's actually happening. So relating this back to what we saw last time, these are the conditions or the market regimes where noise and volatility are correlated. One where they're both low, one where they're both high. And so this, of course, relates to these lines here. And then when the conditions are like this, where they disagree when noise is low and volatility is high and vice versa, these are more likely to be the clusters that we see here. So what are the conclusions that we can draw from this brief piece of analysis? Well, the first one is that noise is sometimes correlated to volatility for short periods of time, but then at other times, and certainly over a much longer time frame, there's actually a negative correlation there. So it's quite a complex pattern in terms of how these two relate. But if you remember why I started to cover this, was because people were asking on the YouTube comments, is volatility effectively the same as noise? And so in these brief three episodes, I hope that I've shown you that the answer is definitely no, they are not. They are independent characteristics of price action. And furthermore, you would use noise and volatility in very different ways to inform different aspects of your trading strategies. And so I hope you now see how this has important implications for how you use noise and volatility data. And I think that a thorough understanding of both of these is really essential in order to turn them to your advantage and to make your trading more successful. Over many of the past episodes, I've talked about volatility. I've looked at the average true range indicator, but that's usually been in relation to some other subject. I've never actually covered volatility in its own right, but I'm going to put that right. Because volatility is a really important subject and the fact that this can assist with your risk management within your trading, it can be used to reduce drawdowns, it can even be used for trade filtering, it can inform diversification of your portfolio and certainly will impact how you position size in your trades. And so I really do think that it deserves its own series. Now, my plan is to start this either in November or December later this year. So be sure that you subscribe to the channel so you're notified when those episodes become available. 
But in the meantime, as soon as I finished this mini-series on noise, which will be coming to an end very soon, I've got another topic I'm going to cover. And I'm hopeful that this one will radically change the way you look at trading. And for any of you who are looking to turn trading from being a hobby to a career, then you'll be particularly interested. But before either of those, we have just a few more episodes in this new series, and these are going to focus on trading indicators that use noise. And I'm going to be looking in particular at the Kaufman Adaptive Moving Average, which in actual fact isn't a moving average at all. But I'm assuming Kaufman used that term because of the fact that you would use this in exactly the same way that you would use a normal moving average. But because this incorporates the aspects of noise in the price action, it really does provide some opportunities for trading strategies that normal moving averages don't. Now you'll see that episode top right if it's already available. If not, please do subscribe. But now until next time, trade safe.